Hi, I'm Rod Saunders from Jew and Greek. Happy New Year, everybody. You know, every New Year's, pastors give their members an inspiring message for the coming year. Today, I want to share with you some clips from a couple of the best New Year's messages I've ever heard from a couple of my favorite pastors. The first one is Mark Brzee from World Outreach Church here in Tulsa. He worked alongside of Brother Hagen back in the 70s and has traveled the world over the past 40 years preaching and teaching the Word. Now, I always assumed that he pretty much had it easy because of his association with Brother Hagen, but as you'll hear in this message, he had to live by faith and speak faith in order to get where he is today. I remember Pastor Janet and I were in, uh, uh, we're in Rome, Italy, getting ready. We're, I think the next day, I think we're flying home, and we walked down to this little coffee shop down from our 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 uh, VRBO where we stayed. And this this nice little old lady there, they had a mask on. She came up and, and we were looking for something and she spoke English. So she helped us. And um, she said, you need to go across the street and get a mask. We said, what for? She said, there's something coming out of the north. And we said, what? She said, it's something that's coming out. It's a, it's a sickness. It's coming out of the north. You need to go get a mask. I thought, I have no idea what she's talking about. And it did. It, did, it came out of the northern part of Italy. Long story from what we know right now. But um, so I remember we, we got back home. And then, of course, all of a sudden, within a number of weeks, we're starting to hear all of that. And, and then so a few years down the road, um, we survived. Look it up if you want. But... Um, God said back there in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day. He didn't say, I'm just going to call a few folks to listen to what I'm saying. He said, I'm calling heaven and earth to record this day. You, you might want to look at that. Okay, Deuteronomy. Oh, there it is up on the, that screen. Okay, never mind. There it is. I call heaven and earth to record this day that I've set before you. I've set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. In other words, those are both out there. They've been out there for a few thousand years. I'm setting before you uh, life and death, blessing and cursing. And then he gets real, real specific. He says, therefore, choose life. He says, there's life, there's death, there's blessing, there's cursing. In case you're a little confused as to what you should have, I'm going to let you know what you ought to choose is life. I call heaven and earth to record this day. This is forever settled in heaven. God said, I set before you blessing and cursing, life and death. Those choices are always going to be there. Even in the church, if we choose death, we can go that direction. If we choose cursing, we can go that direction, but it's not God's fault. He said, I'm setting those out before you. And then what? Choose life. Choose life, therefore, that both thou and thy seed might live. So in other words, it'll not only work on you, it'll work on your family. So he says this here. He said, I said before you, blessing and cursing, life and death, choose ye therefore life, that both thou and thy seed might live. You choose it, you get it. But it's a choice. Now, God wouldn't, he wouldn't give us that kind of a choice without telling us how to choose. All right? He, he didn't say, choose life, and I hope you figure out how to do it. It's a tough road? No. This is interesting. If you go back to the 19th chapter of the book of uh, Proverbs... I think it's verse 11 where he said, now he's already said, I set before you this day blessing and cursing, life and death, choose you therefore life that both thou and thy seed might live. And then we go to, to uh, Proverbs, book of wisdom, Proverbs 19th chapter, and he says, he says back there, he says, death and life, death and life, well, you just flip a coin, see what you get. Well, you just, wait, you, you just wait and see how God wakes up in the morning. If he's in a good mood, you get blessing. If he's in a bad mood, you get something. No. He said, blessing and cursing, he said, are set before you. But he says now in Proverbs, life and death, if it's, I was glad to find out it's up to me. I believe we can, I believe you and I, I believe if we'll do it, I believe we can set the course for 24 for our own lives. I believe we can lay out the rails for our own life. We, we can lay the tracks out for our own life. We can, we can set our lane out for our own life. Doesn't mean bad things aren't going to come along, okay? I mean, during World War, World War II, I mean, we had uh, it changed everybody's life in America. During the, the Great Depression, changed everybody. Things, things happened, but in the middle of that, God always took care of his people. In the middle of that, you still get what you say, okay? So we go back through there, death and life are in the power of the tongue, Power of the tongue. Well, I can't control everything else, but I can control what I say. You know, and if I don't watch it, I can say what I got instead of saying what I want. 
But he makes a statement. He said, he has said, he has said, he, God has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, that we might boldly say, I'll not fear what man can do unto me. You can cut that middle part out and say, he has said that we might boldly say. He has said that we might boldly say. See, the first thing we ought to do is set ourselves in a place to be able to get, I'm, I'm going to be saying what God says about me. I'm not going to say what I think. I'm not going to say what I feel. I'm not going to say what people say about me. But well, what if people say bad things about me? I don't care because I don't get what they say. I get what I say. Yeah, but I don't want anybody to know what's... I've watched this for years. I don't want anybody to know what I'm dealing with. They're going to say, they're going to say unbelief things. Doesn't make any difference if the whole body of Christ said unbelief things over me. I do not get what they say. I get what I say. He shall have whatsoever the church saith. No. He shall get whatsoever the body of Christ saith. No. He shall have, Mark 11, 23, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He, she shall have whatsoever they saith. I don't get what somebody else says. I get what I say. According to my faith, so so be it done unto me. Uh, for instance, we, we, Pastor Janet and I, goodness, 1979, we're on our really first, second road trip. We're, we're traveling across the nation. And um, uh, we had a, a whole, not a good story. We had a little two-seat sports car. Uh, was probably not the best investment I ever made. Um, bought it before we were getting ready to get married, you know. So I had this little two-seat sports car. So we're traveling the nation in a little two-seat sports car with all of our luggage, all of our belongings, everything packed behind us, under our feet, everything. We're, and we're traveling, and, and uh, it was, the car was basically kind of junk, and um, it was, wasn't in real good shape, and we really needed to get a different vehicle. But we, we wanted to go to the nations. We didn't have any invitations. We wanted to travel this nation, but we didn't have any invitation. We had nowhere to go. We had a great message, just nobody wanted to hear it. Okay? And we'd, go, we'd have meetings, and people are staying away by the thousands. And we're on our way. We're leaving Tulsa. If it wasn't for a divine miracle, we wouldn't have got out of town. We were sitting at our dumpy little apartment with a, that two-seat sports car with an empty gas tank, and we didn't have any money at all. We didn't, have, we didn't have a credit card at the time, didn't have money to put gas in the tank. If we can get to Michigan, 900 miles, if we can get up there, we have an invitation of a place to go preach. But are we going to do walk? God worked a miracle. Somebody walked by and stuck something green in my shirt. I love pockets. I love shirts with pockets. Anyway, <laughs> Stuck something green in my pocket, and I looked when we got out of, out of their house, and it was a $100 bill. I said, oh, man, we can get to Michigan. We even get to eat on the way. But we're on our way there, and, and we're just driving along. And I'm thinking, my poor wife, she probably wonders what in the world she got herself into. We're broke. We don't have invitations. We don't have meetings. We got this dumpy little two-seat sports car that we're upside down in the value of it. We got all this stuff going on. It's not looking good at all. Okay, things are pretty good now, but they weren't that way 44 years ago. (laughs) Sometimes you have to look to see how people got to where they're at and get how, and that's the same we're going to get, that's to where we're going. But anyway, anyway, we're driving along. We just been, I think, I think we just been to a Wendy's salad bar somewhere, Rolla, Missouri, maybe, I don't know. But here we are, we got, we've got $100 to last us through our trip, through our first meeting to see whatever we're going to get out of that first meeting. Hopefully they'll give us an offering. We can stay at my parents, we do have a place to sleep, and they'll feed us, so we're going to be okay. But man, I'm just driving along and I'm just thinking, this is not what I signed up for. We're broke, we don't have any money, we don't have any invitations, we don't have anywhere to go. Even we do, people don't really care that we're there. It's like, this is not, a, this is not the picture of what I, what I signed on for. I signed on to be a world changer. Amen. Somehow the world hasn't wanted to get changed so far, you know? And we're just driving along, and, 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 and I'm just, I am thinking. I'm thinking. I'm pondering. I'm meditating. I'm, I'm going through all, and, and I'm thinking. And I keep thinking. This is not the way it's supposed to be. That's not the way it's supposed to be. But then I got to thinking about the power of our words. Yeah. If you don't say it, you don't get it. We're still talking about 2024. What do you want this next year? What do you want? Do you want your needs to be met, your bills to be paid? you want your body to stay healthy? You want weapons formed against it to not prosper? What is, what is you looking for? If you want it, you really ought to be saying it. Don't say what you got, say what you want. Don't say what you think, say what the Bible says, and then switch over. 
I got to thinking about all that, and I thought, this isn't right. Not when God said he'd supply all of our need. Uh, we need meetings. We need invitations. We need fuel money. We need a new car. We need, we need, we need a decent place. to. We're in this dumpy little apartment. You know, the air would come through under the door. It's a horrible little place. And, and uh, you know, and I got, the more I thought about it, and all of a sudden, I just without, I, I didn't think about it. All of a sudden, I, I turned to my sweet little wife that's over there looking out the window, probably thinking, dear God, what did I get myself into? But I turned over there and I said, before this trip's over, I said it. Before this trip's over, we will have a better vehicle. Before this trip's over, we'll have money in the bank. Before this trip's over, we'll always have invitations in this nation. Before this trip's over, we'll always have invitations internationally. We'll never be without meetings. We'll never be without invitation. We'll never be without money. We'll never be without vehicles. We'll never be without housing. That's just the way it is. And I thought, before I had a chance to think about it, about what did I just say, I just looked back out the front and I just started driving again. <laughs> Things got really quiet for a little while. But you know, by the time we finished that trip and came back to Tulsa, we had gotten rid of that car <laughs> and had a brand new one. Oh, we had, we had to make payments on it. Yeah, but it was a brand new car. Ran good. And we had a vehicle. We had money in the bank. God had begun to bless us. We had invitations are starting to come in from everywhere. Suddenly people are starting to invite us to go to other nations. Doors are opening to other nations. And finances are starting to come in. That was 1979. And by the end of 1979, I can honestly say, there are times that have been better than others, of course. But I can honestly say, I was young and now I'm just middle-aged. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. I got 45 years into this already, and God has never let us down. Never has, never will. That's just all there is to it. We've always had invitations. We've always had countries to go to. We've always had churches to go to. We've always had money in the bank. Every bill's always... We have never been laid on a payment. We've never been not able to make a payment. Anything from a little office space that we had in our home to this building to anything else, God has never let us down. But you know where it all started? It started when he said it, and it began to work when we said it. So this wasn't just what God said. All of a sudden, it's what am I going to say? What am I going to say? The next is Pastor Alan DiDio from Encounter Charlotte and the channel Encounter Today. In his New Year's message, he told us how he learned to operate in biblical faith after hearing a challenging message by Lester Sumrall. You understand, you have to exercise your faith. Dr. Lester Summerall, when I was first born again, I read a story with Dr. Lester Summerall talking about faith. Now, generally, I, you know, I'm not going to listen to some wet behind the ears Bible school pup who's talking about faith, but if Lester Summerall, who started a church in more than 100 nations of the earth, the, many of them are still there today, the strongest churches in those nations. If he's going to talk about faith, I'm going to listen to what Dr. Summerall has to say about faith. And he said a lot of people are trying to believe for a five-tier wedding cake, and they hadn't had a donut yet. Huh? See, to you, that seems like a quaint illustration, but I was a new believer. I was radical. And when I heard that statement, I was, I had just gotten into Bible college. I had zero money to my name, no funds, no food to eat. I would go days and days and days without food. They would bring leftover week old bread from the grocery store or whatever to the dorms to bless the students. And I would wait on that. And that would be my meal, bread. And a little tip, if you ball it up for some reason, you fill up a little bit faster. It's true. I got blessed a little bit, and I got to borrow some mustard from somebody, and then I had mustard on bread. And if I was really living high on the sweet life, I had me some spam. Blessed be the name of God forever. To this day, I still love me some spam. Because it reminds me of a time when I was believing God and trusting God and how good it was. It may not be good to you. It may not mean much to you. But if you ain't had none to eat and you believe God for some spam, that spam tastes supernatural. Give me a spam sandwich, some sun drop, and some chips. I'm ready to go. 
So I heard him say, people are trying to believe for a five-tier wedding cake, and they did not had a donut yet. I'm a starving Bible college student. So I said, Lord, I believe I receive right now. You said you would supply all my need according to your riches and glory. What things soever I desire, when I pray, I believe I receive it. I shall have it. So I believe I receive for breakfast this morning a donut in the name of Jesus. I believe I receive a donut according to your word. Now you think a donut is like a flippant thing. I was, this was my breakfast, you hung, hungry. You understand me? Hangry. I believe I receive a donut in Jesus' name. Wouldn't tell nobody about it. I began to apply that. The day that I did that, I walked into the school. Somebody came up to me and he said, hey, the Lord told me to bless you. Come on over here. Took me to the counter, and there was a whole bunch of donuts there. Get whatever you like. Ah, step one, check. I'm a teenager in Bible college. Not telling anybody. My mom hates the story because she didn't know I had any need because I wasn't telling nobody I had a need except him. I said, okay, work for a donut. Now, in Jesus' name, I believe I receive a Big Mac, glory to God, with fries and a Coke. I believe I receive a Big Mac with fries and a Coke. I believe I receive a Big Mac with fries and a Coke. I'm in a church with 5,000 people. I know no one. No one knows I'm believing for a Big Mac, fries, and a Coke. A stranger walks up to me. This is no joke. Hands me a coupon and said, here, the Lord told me to give you this. It's a coupon for a Big Mac, fries, and a Coke. You never seen somebody so excited about a Big Mac? Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. No, I'm serious. I flipped. I, I mean, I, be, I just tears streamed down my cheeks as I sat there in the service and lifted my hands and thanked him that I believed him. And I received from him. I set that hope in front of me. And I believed I received when I prayed. And I went from that and I said, I need some gas in my car. In Jesus' name. And Lord, you provide that gas. My car is yours. I'll drive students around. I'll help them get from A to B. Because I'm not going to ask you to bless me with a car. Or bless me with gas in my car so I can do what I want to do. I want to build the kingdom. So Lord, I believe I received gas in my car. Someone came up to me and said, the Lord told me to fill up the gas in your car. I said, this thing is working. I've gone from a donut. Now I've gone from a Big Mac. And now I'm getting gas in my car. In Jesus' name, I believe God for my rent. Sound the alarm. That's the theme of this message tonight, by the way, sound the alarm. And this is the first time in a service we have had twice an alarm going off in the service, some sort of notification for the state of North Carolina. Say, I believe I receive in Jesus' name. I want to wake you up to faith. That's the alarm I'm sounding tonight. Waking you up to hope. Waking you up to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, let's live this thing. Rent, now that I may be dating myself with this, was $250. Don't ask. It wasn't worth that where I was. Lord, I believe I receive in Jesus' name. You said you would supply all my need according to your riches and glory. Father, I'm faithful in my tithe and in my offering. And in Jesus' name, I believe I receive what things soever I desire when I pray. If I believe I receive, I shall have it. I believe I receive $250 for my rent plus additional money for my tithe. In Jesus' mighty name. A few hours later, an envelope is slipped under the door of where I was staying with the cash exactly as I needed to pay my rent. Some people are trying to believe for a five-tier wedding cake, and you ain't believe for a donut yet. I said, Lord, this woman here, she seems like the right one. <laughs> if you want me to marry her, I went into a jewelry store. Here's what I'm believing for. This is the ring that I would like to give her, and then just some matching bands with it. This is what I would like. If you want me to marry her, you pay for it. God didn't tell you to pay for it. He just told you to pray for it. So said, you pay for it if you want me to have it. I'm working and I'm serving in the prayer center. I'm serving. I'm going to give you an opportunity to serve later tonight. I'm serving in, in the prayer center. And a gentleman drives by the prayer center. And the Lord tells him to pull over and to walk in there. He comes there with a bag from a jewelry store. Some time ago, the Lord told him to buy a certain engagement ring and the bands that match, and he thought he was a single man, that this would be for him and for whoever he were to find as his spouse. And he said, the Lord told me to give this to you. It was the exact engagement ring, the wedding band. Sorry, you cessationists that don't believe in all this stuff. I've just seen it work way too much. So I guess i got to marry this girl now. 
So the engagement ring, the wedding bands, blessed. Time comes for our wedding now. We're in there looking at the facility. We were dreaming big. 5,000 seat facility for the 10 people that we know to come to our wedding. But it wasn't about the facility. It was about the significance that at this altar is where we sowed. At this altar is where we put seed in the ground. At this altar is where we prayed, where we wept tears, where we praised at that altar. So I didn't care if it was a big empty room. It was the significance of that room. And as we're in there, there's a professional cake maker walking by. She's walking with someone. She said, who is that in there? They said, oh, that's the Didios, or that's, that's, you know, Alan and Tara. She said, the favor of God is on them. I don't know who they are, but the Lord told me to take care. If they're getting married, to take care of their wedding cake. And she made a multi-tiered, amazing wedding cake. And I said, check. <laughs> From a donut to a five-tiered wedding cake. I said, this thing is working. Come on. But in every sin, now, now this is the way we've lived our lives. Now, in between all of that, what you don't see is the seed that was sown, the sacrificial giving that was done, the confessing of the word, the speaking it, speaking it, not seeing it. You didn't see the time when we were married and we had an eviction notice on the door. And it was now, now we had a month, the month has passed, now it's time. They're coming to the door. They're going to remove our furniture and set it out on the street. And I took that eviction notice, didn't I? And I took a black magic marker and I, and I wrote on it, paid in full. And I I stood on top of it and I said in the name of Jesus I declare this thing is paid in Jesus name and someone who did not know us came and found out where went into the school records there were a teacher went into the school records found out our address came to our home and said the Lord sent me here and told me to give you this it was a bag of groceries and a check for the exact amount we needed for our rent Amen. this is how we live what did I do I took that eviction notice I wrote paid in full and put it on the refrigerator and lay my hands on it. Hope, expectation, I'm putting it in front of me. I can see it. Are you in Romans chapter 4? This is how, this is how, last year we gave a quarter of a million dollars away in this tiny little ministry. Because this is what we believe in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is how next year we're going to give a quarter of a million dollars into a missions work in three days. We're going to do in three days what we did in a whole year in 2024. Hallelujah. Are you in Romans chapter 4? Is it midnight yet? Because we've got to ring in the new year, right? Tonight. Is it tonight the new year? So that means i got tonight and all night and tomorrow... No, we won't do that to you. You just came at a bad night. All right, Romans chapter 17, excuse me, 4 and verse number 17. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. I promise you we're, we're winding up here. As it is written, speaking to Father Abraham, I have made thee a father of many nations, before whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and who calls those things which be not, as though they were. What does God do? They got it over there. What does God do? What should you do? I call it paid for in Jesus' name. I call it healed in Jesus' name. Change how you name it. How you identify it matters. Who, look at, now look at what Abraham's doing here, against hope, believed in hope. So there's two kinds of hope working against each other, isn't there? There is a natural worldly hope that says, probably not going to happen. You're going to die a terrible death. You're going to get sick. Coming up on vacation, you know what's going to happen the day before your vacation? Everybody's going to get sick. That's one kind of hope. You're expecting something to happen. But then there's another hope that didn't come from this world because this world only tells you to get your hopes down, not to get your hopes up. There is another hope that gets deposited in you all the way up from heaven that wars against the infinite, the, the, the ignorant hope of this world who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, 
He considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Stop. Now, faith and hope collaborate. Is that right? They work together. Yes? I think it was Charles Capps who said that hope is what you put the thermostat on. It's the thermostat. Faith is the power working behind it. Right? So if you set the thermostat to 70 degrees, you ever woke up in the morning and you forgot to turn the heat on? And it's 55 degrees in your house, 60 degrees in your house. So then you turn the thermostat to 70. That's hope. Now, hope gets faith working. And you hear that system kick on. And what most people do is, I, well, I set it on 70. Why isn't it 70? Give it a minute. Look at your neighbor say, it's working. They tell them, just hold on. It's working. Just hold on. It's working. Don't pay attention to what you can see. It's working. So being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. So if we're going to be hopeful in 2024, don't look at the outward circumstances. You know, lots of people are making lots of predictions about 2024. But one thing we can always count on is that God honors his word and faith in his word. So my prayer for you in 2024 is that you will grow in faith, that you learn how to set your course by speaking faith, and that you won't be shaken by circumstances, but will build your house on the solid rock. Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Luke 6, 47-49 So no matter what 2024 throws at you, if you'll hear, believe, confess, and act on God's word, you can have the assurance that the storms you face won't prevail against you. So thanks for watching and have a prosperous new year.